bonjour, 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 bonjour. <laughs> you know, the meme. Beauty and the Beast is a thing, as you know. I love Beauty and the Beast, as you might also know. And, yeah, okay, my hair is a bit... My hair is acting a little bit weird right now. I got it done the other day, but it's still, like, working itself out. But yeah, I still like it. Feel feeling fabulous, feeling beautiful. So what better way to deal with feeling beautiful than to talk about Beauty and the Beast some more, because I can talk about this forever, because there's a lot of versions of the story, and so far I've more or less liked all of them. Uh, but today is going to be a little bit different, in that I'm going to be looking over a game thing. It's still like a demo, it's not done. It's by this artist I follow on Tumblr called um, E.X. Brook. I'll put a link to their stuff in the thing down there. Anyway, so they post art and other cool posts and things, and one of their artsy things is um, a version of Beauty and the Beast. So of course I have liked and reblogged every single image by this person because they are all wonderful. Besides the fact that it's Beauty and the Beast, it's actually like very good quality art. It's an interesting concept for the Beast design and Belle's or Beauty's design. Actually, the Beast design in this version kind of reminds me loosely of like Wang Shi Tong from Avatar The Last Airbender, you know. The giant owl guy who has a library in the desert because that's just a great place to keep your books, I guess. <laughs> nah, the stone library is probably well insulated. Anyway, point is, Beauty and the Beast. I'm doing this. I'm going to like play through this little demo thing on EX Brooks Tumblr. Or, well, I think the link goes to a different site. I've gone through this thing before, and I believe it does end on a cliffhanger, because obviously the artist has a life outside of their, you know, internet hobbies of making this, uh, what they call it, I think they called it a point-and-click game, but I just figured I'd play through it and share it with you guys so you can see that this exists and maybe go play it yourself, and maybe this artist will be able to finish it one day and we can go through the whole thing together. Anyway, I'm not a gamer person, so... Obviously I don't have like the cool YouTube gamer setup, but like I hope this is good enough because it's good enough for me. And this video is just an excuse for me to play through this game again and share some more of this person's art because it's very good. Anyway, on to the game! So first I'm on EX Brooks Tumblr, looking at their general logo, and here is the actual, you know, icon basically for the game. It's very, very good art. And the link below it. Um, so it's called the Le Mystère de la Bête. So it's more uh, the mystery of the beast than it is like if not Beauty and the Beast, but you know, similar vibes there. Uh, it says down below, Don't look now, but I've put a game I made on the internet. The first little step towards that Beauty and the Beast point-and-click adaptation. This interactive fiction demo is meant to set the tone, introduce the characters, and show how the player and narrative will interact. You can play the game, explore the castle, and have dinner with a cursed horror bird by clicking here. So I'm gonna... I'm gonna click there. The official screen start for the game, and it's just a more zoomed in version of the icon from before. I really like uh, Beauty's design, her like shorter hair. I do like the flowery motifs between the two of them. I like how the Beast's character has like this mask for his face, and though there's like some details on there, it's not just like a blank white mask to be staring at you like like no face from Spirited Away. It's there's some details there to like add. Adds, it adds character, and one of those details is of a flower, a rose. So, and the beast is holding a rose, and there's chains on the beast's hand flipping around. So yes, it's very good. Very good design. A plus art. I'm not an art person, but I, I love this. And by not an art person, I don't mean that I don't like art. I do like art. I'm just not super skilled in it, and I'm not like a professional artist. So I might not be using the best words to describe what I like about this art style, or the art that I will show later. But it's good. It's a good art. <laughs> that's, th that's the universal internet of good job. I like it. Really like it. Uh, also just the drama of the beauty holding this. Is it a letter opener or is it actually a knife? And just the tiny drop of blood coming off of it. So like, oh, oh, what are we gonna find out? We shall see. By the way, I never took French. I do not speak French. All I know is from my many adventures of La Belle et la Bête that it's usually pronounced bet, but I might still end up saying beat because I am a native English speaker and that's how you would most likely pronounce that word without the little accent mark over the first E. Because language. 
The Mystere de la Bête is a short interactive fiction demo for an in-progress point-and-click mystery. You are Belle, a young witch who makes her living breaking curses, and you have been tasked with solving the riddle of an enchanted castle and the monster who lives within. Explore the castle, discover the secrets former inhabitants left behind, and coax the truth out of Bête, one way or another. This story demo is intended to set the tone and show how the player will engage with the narrative in the finished game. Update from you know, March of 2018, or 2019. This is an older post, obviously. It's been a year since this was updated, but I just want to go through it. So let's do that. Run game. There's supposed to be an image here, I believe, as you can see by this nice image icon that's faded out, but it will not load. So I guess I'm just stuck with saying, begin. The monster peers at you from across the table. You can only barely see its eyes. Two discs of red light behind the placid porcelain mask that obscures its face. You try not to squirm in the face of the statue still thing that's looking over you. A subtle movement catches your eye. Its throat flexes behind its twisted neck and a low rasp breaks the silence. Will you marry me? That's the first thing it's said to you since you showed up. And its voice is as ugly as it is unreadable. There's no tone to the question. No threat, no hope, no demand, no fear. Your monster doesn't move. You don't either. You say no. You say the only thing you're willing to say. No. Your voice is flat as it's. It still doesn't move, plowing ahead into a stream of warped words as if you hadn't said, a th said anything at all. You are a guest here. Your every wish will be seen to. I must give you all you desire. I must tell you only truth. You have but one obligation. You will dine with me each evening at eight o'clock. At all other times, do as you will within the palace. Everything here is yours. It bows its head, and then the rest of it finally moves. It unwinds the harsh curve of its neck, adjusts its gangly limbs, and gets a better grip on its woefully person-shaped chair, twists and untwists its tail, and folds its unwielding wings. It seems to be done talking relaxed, and awaiting your response. The whole speech certainly sounded alluring, but the words it chose, do as you will within the palace, those were quite on purpose. You have been told already that the monster's goal was to take you prisoner. You were told this by the maiden with the rose, who was promised a way to this castle and its beast when a loved one of hers was unlucky enough to step inside. Her life traded for his. What might become of her here you will never know, because you are not that maiden. You are Belle, the one she called to take her place. You are a witch, a healer of hexes, and a solver of spells. You wear the title proudly. You are here to break the curse. You're frustrated with your lack of progress. It's been one week since you arrived. That means seven days to wander the castle. That means seven evenings with the monster. That should mean half a hundred opportunities to get to the bottom of the mystery. The problem, you find, is the monster itself. It can't lie, so it claims, but that doesn't mean it's required to talk. It avoids you during the day. It says little at night. You've already asked it all of the obvious questions. Who cursed this place, and who are you, and how can the curse be broken? And each time its silence tells you that this won't be that easy. It hasn't even told you its name, so you've taken to calling it Bit. It's a mean name. You'd hope to shame it into telling you its real name. No such luck. And so you awake on the eighth day to do as you will within the castle. Go to the library, the garden, check your bag. Let's just do this one quick. You check the contents of your bag, finding a letter from your sister Felicity. You forgot to send a reply before walking into an enchanted castle with no outgoing mail. Back. And going back to the previous section, let's go to the library. The library is pristine, as, it, as is every room you've seen in the palace. A calm little fire is smoldering in the hearth, and a tea tray is sitting on a table. The pot steaming as if it was set down just moments before you arrived. The rows and rows of books and documents are orderly, everything in its place. Someone loved this room once. It looks like no one's touched it in years. The most untroubled corner is in the very back, a shelf piled with journals, documents, letters, and a and handmade collections of a variety of print materials, all of which look like they haven't been disturbed in a very long time. 
The most recent sign of use seems to be down one of the more isolated halls, filled with plain-looking guides and tomes, where a few volumes have been left in disarray, defying the otherwise perfectly organized space. You decide to stop investigating, you check your bag. Checking the bag, it just blo blutter. You stop investigating. Let's go with, what happens when we look at the not disturbed? You investigate the shelf of neatly arranged papers, eventually prying open a journal. To your dismay, a shower of loose papers scatter to the floor, falling out from between the pages. Like the pages in the journal, which seems, in fact, to be a sketchbook, the pages are covered in drawings and sketches. They're all magnificent, of a professional quality, and they were all drawn from life. So there was life here, once. A handsome, well-dressed man sits on a on horseback, surrounded by adoring followers and excited hounds, the wind in his dark hair. The prince and his hunting party, the scribbled title reads. A pale youth stands at attention with a sword in hand, his bowed lips pulled into an anxious smile, clearly conscious of the artist who's sketching him. Portrait of a fencer, says the title. An elegant woman holding a book, shockingly tall and shockingly beautiful save for the fact that her face was hastily scribbled over. The mistress. I cannot bear to draw her likeness. The sketches go on like this, documenting the castle's former inhabitants. Take the sketches, return, check your bag. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take them, pick up everything. That's how point and click should go, probably, maybe. This could be useful. You collect the old sketches and gently tuck them into your bag. Return, you return to the sitting area. The library is pristine. Uh, yep, this is the same one as before. A uh, few volumes left in disarray. You wade into the darkness, your eyes moving from the shelves to the floor, where a, way, where a small collection of books sit open. Seems you disturb someone's work. Bet? No reply. You move forward, lean down, and study the books on the floor. They're all almanacs. Old almanacs at that. The latest one is almost six years old, and several are from years before that. Open next to them, you find a journal, the ink already dry on the page, and at this you raise a brow. Someone was trying to write a new almanac for this year, using the old ones and calculating them forward in time. Moon phases, weather patterns, the forecast shows impressive dedication and somewhat mediocre mathematical skill. Same. <laughs> you take the almanac, return, check your bag. So when you check your bag, it again has the letter from before, and now, a collection of sketches showing the prince with a hunting party, a pale youth with a sword, and an elegant woman whose face has been scribbled over. Back to the almanacs. I'm gonna, gonna take the almanac. You know the journal is likely bits, and that they're likely nearby, but you don't want to leave it on the floor. You gently slip the almanac into your bag and return the other books to their shelves. You return to the sitting area library is still pristine. Check your bag now. You check the contents of your bag, finding the letter from your sister, the handmade almanac. Oh, interesting. Puts the almanac above the sketches. A handmade almanac for the current year that, by process of elimination, probably belongs to Bet. All right, so let's go back for my bag. You decide to stop investigating. You take one more look around the empty library, contemplate the tea tray, and turn to leave. Before you t can take a step, something breaks the silence. A rapid scratching sound, then a metallic grind. And suddenly a length of chain descends from the ceiling and lands loudly at your feet. You hear a frustrated noise from above, and the scratching sound halts. You hear a frustrated noise from above, and the scratching sounds halt. You look up to see Bet perched among the rafters, glaring at the ground. Three of its claws, three of its clawed limbs grip the wood, while the fourth dangles, weighed down by the chain shackled, weighed down by the chain shackled to its wrist. It's had that chain since you arrived, a tether of indefinite length that rarely seems to impede your host's movement, but does make it very hard for it to hide. It seems Bet had tried to wind the chain around the rafters so that it could lurk out of view, chain and all. It almost worked. You smile in the face of Bet's hopeless frustration. Good day! I was just looking for you. That's as far as you get before it shakes the chain loose from the rafters, unfurls its wings, and leaps into the shadows. 
retire to a room before dinner or go to the garden. I'm gonna go to the garden. The garden is not like the rest of the palace. The rest of the palace is splendid, gilded, shining, but the garden can be best described as a token attempt. Everything is well kept, of course. The rows and hedges are all neatly trimmed, the buildings outside are in excellent repair, and there isn't a weed in sight. The problem is the plants themselves. They're all alive, sure, but nothing is flourishing here. It all has the look of flora that has been given the bare minimum, and is giving the bare minimum in return. The leaves are sparse and dull, the branches are gray and gnarled. Nothing flowers. You're surprised by how melancholy it makes you feel. Only one corner of this mediocre garden really seems to deserve your sorrow. Over the hedges, you can make out a cluster of twisted brown limbs that are, all of them, well and truly dead. A ways away, the garden turns into fields, and at that divide stands an impressive stable, its doors wide open. Inexplicably, two, ho two horses are peering at you from a nearby pasture. I'm gonna see about the dead trees. That's... The dead branches take up two entire flower beds, forming a hallway of sad, dry plant corpses. Briar corpses at that. All the twigs are twisted and covered in intimidating thorns, which only appear more sharp in their desiccating state. You keep your hands at your sides for once. Some of the plants had been young, it seems, for they're still tethered carefully to the wooden trellises that, to keep them upright. Others stand on their own, even in death, firmly rooted in the ground. As you bend to inspect the soil, you're surprised to find it damp. Just like all the other flower beds, despite the cloudless day. If these plants could not be kept alive, then it was not for lack of trying. At ground level, you notice something else. A metal stake once used to anchor the trellises into the ground has come loose, leaning to one side halfway out of the dirt. You can take it, turn. I don't want to know what the use is. Is this person going to try and kill the beast? <laughs> Well, I don't think so, but oh gosh. Okay, you take the metal stake. You reach carefully under the thorns and pry the stake out of the ground, placing it in your bag. It couldn't hurt to have a thorn of your own. That's a great line. I love this. Return to the garden. Let's go to the stable. The impressive stable. As you approach the stable, one of the horses meanders towards the fence, reaching her head towards you expectantly. You pause to pet her nose. Cute. You found a surprising abundance of animals in the palace, all of them well-groomed, well-fed, and often very friendly, wanting only for human company. The castle tends to your every need almost autonomously, setting out food and clothes and keeping the rooms clean. So perhaps it is the same for every creature here, save for those poor plants. The stable is empty. It seems that there are only two horses in residence, though there are enough empty stalls to house, a do to house dozens. A barn cat naps on a shelf of saddle blankets, among racks of well-oiled bridles. The room smells of polished leather. A shelf catches your eye, bare save for a pair of black riding gloves. They're made of soft leather that show years of use, but they're still in very good shape. They're also small. The hands that fit into them would have been only a little larger than yours. Gonna take those gloves then, and wear them to the ball. No, they're not that kind of gloves. Anyway. You pick up the gloves, fold them neatly, and slip them into your bag. Turn to the garden. It's pristine, but it's not. Okay, let's check our bag. We have the letter from our sister, the almanac, the sketches, a pair of riding gloves. The soft black leather is lovingly worn, but still in good condition. They're small, only a little bit bigger than your own hands. And an iron spike that had come loose from the garden. It's rusted, but still sharp. So let's stop investigating. You turn to walk back to the palace, and something freezes you in your tracks. Bet is sitting on the roof, next to the third floor window. You both stare at each other for a long moment. It doesn't look like it should be here. It doesn't look like it should be anywhere at all. Chimerical monstrosity that it is. But out here, under the blue sky, on this lovely day, bathed by this unforgiving sun, it seems especially wrong. You can see all of it now that it's not clothed in the castle's many shadows, all of its gangly scaled limbs and massive talons, its long neck holding its head at an odd angle, its winding tail trailing behind it for balance, its fur? feathers? 
Whatever covers it is black as pitch, drinking in the daylight. It breaks the stillness first, one gaunt shoulder shifting and rising as it takes a step forward. Its head swings to the side and its spine bends as it turns around, 180 degrees, to retreat back inside. You don't relax until the tip of its tail has vanished through the window. Until now, you hadn't realized the monster was quite that big. You get ready to dine with Vit. Will you marry me? You say no, just like you do every night, for Bet asks this every night. Dinner then progresses the same way it always does. You ask few questions, and Bet answers even fewer. The food is good, at least. Bet never eats. That would no doubt require removing the mask that covers its face. And this it refuses to do. You've asked. You can't imagine what it has to be modest about when the rest of it looks, well, like that. But you have more important things to pry into. That's rude. <laughs> you think back to the contents of your bag, which you were not permitted to bring to dinner, and plan to confront it come morning. You awake on the ninth day to do as you will. You wake from strange dreams and recall none of them. The sun is just starting to show above the horizon when you set out. It climbs higher and higher in the sky as you investigate the palace's many ornate rooms. Vet is nowhere to be found. You save the portrait gallery for last mostly because you don't like it. It's a beautiful room, no doubt, as beautiful as any other in the palace. Splendid paintings cover the long hallway, and a few chairs are scattered throughout for one to sit and enjoy the art. And it would be lovely if it were not saturated with the feeling of being watched. You attribute that to the painted royalty, and try not to think about it too much. It's on your third walk up and down the hall that you notice something different. The wallpaper in one place seems to be slightly offset. The disturbance gets worse as you move towards it, revealing a depression in the wall. You find yourself a hidden passage. Or check your bag. Uh, yeah, nothing has changed, so I'm going to go through this hidden passage. You hear a bet before you see it. Or rather, you hear the chain shackled to its wrist, scraping against the tile floor right in front of you. This room is a mess. The lamps are unlit. The corners covered in cobwebs and dust. The wallpaper faded and torn. It's not the small disorder of that one quarter of the library. It's not the passable but subpar maintenance of the garden. This is genuine, long-standing neglect. And there, nestled amongst it, is Bet. You need to squint to see it in the low light, half hidden as it is behind the broken table. The chain at your feet clinks as the monster moves, and you, quick and you realize quickly that it intends to flee. Okay, your options are. You drive the metal stake through Bet's chain to pin it in place. That's... that's better than murder, I guess. You show up Felicie's letter to ask if you can send a reply. You return its homemade almanac. You show it the sketches you found. You ask it about the small riding gloves. He wants to flee, but I don't want to pull out a metal stake and, like, scare him off more, so... Can I... Can I ask about the almanac? Wait! You pull the almanac out of your bag and hold it out. Bet starts when it realizes what you're holding. Where did you find that? It rasps. On the ground. It seems to flinch at your curt tone, looking guiltily at the book it had left on the floor. Then it moves forward, extends a clawed hand, and very carefully pulls the book from your grip. You watch for a moment as it sits back and turns through the pages, and fail to contain your curiosity. How were you figuring out the weather forecast from six-year-old books? Bet looks up, then back down leafing rapidly back through the almanac. Abruptly, it holds the book out in front of your face, tapping the open page with a long black talon. See the temperatures? You blink. Yes? Match almanacs with temperature records and air pressure, and then watch for patterns. This means a storm. This means it'll be dry soon. This means the winter will be cold. Because it's always meant that. The talon darts around the page, prodding different numbers. I was terrible at it the first year, but now there are patterns, so I'll get it right up to, say, four or five months out. The rest is just guesses. You didn't actually follow most of that. You were too surprised by its offering of multiple interconnected sentences. In the resulting silence, Bet suddenly seems self-conscious, lowering the book. It seems to consider leaving. Thank you, it says instead, for returning this. Is there anything I can do for you? It's it's kind of that, that self-conscious mood, though, when you're 
rambling on about an interest that you have and nobody else has, like me with Beauty and the Beast. Okay, so you can show it. I don't want to ask about leaving now. Can... Oh, now there's an option of you say no and wish it a good day. Obviously I'm not going to do that. Um, what about the sketches? Vet watches you take a few moments to gather all the sketches from your bag, holding them up for holding them up for it to see. You decide to start simple. Who are these people? Vet leans a little closer to get a better look, holding up a claw to indicate different drawings. That's the prince, it begins, then its claw drifts over the rest of the hunting party, and the fencer, and his companions, a few of them. The claw pauses over the drawing of the faceless woman, and suddenly Bet goes quiet, steps back. I can't tell you any more, it says, quietly. There's something pleading in its voice, so you decide not to press the subject. Are any of them still in the palace? It nods up. It nods almost immediately, stepping forward to point at the drawing of the prince. Then it looks at you, something unreadable in its eyes. But you must have known that. You suppose you did. Bet is already on its feet now, turning away. And the options are... You watch it leave, or... You drive the metal stake through Bet's chain to pin it in place. Okay, <laughs> gonna drive the metal stake through the chain. By the time Bet notices what you're doing, it's too late to react. You plunge the stake down through a link in the chain, through a crack in the tile, pinning it securely to the ground. The chain goes taut. Then the monster seizes in a flurry of motion. It pulls back against the chain, jerks, writhes, but the stake doesn't give. It stops after several long minutes with its body pressed low to the ground. Shackled arm extended, stretching to put the furthest possible distance between itself and you. Perfectly still now, it stares up at you, with an expression in its eyes that you do not want to name. It doesn't ask you why, it just... waits. You realize you're holding your breath. It's gonna show the letter or the gloves. Or, you shouldn't have done this. Okay, I want to see what happens to the gloves. Tense as you are, you only manage to grab one glove. Bet seems to recognize it all the same, with an air of vague confusion. Who did this belong to? Bet looks at the glove, then at you. A rider, it says bluntly. You're not sure what else you expected. You can let him go now, or show the letter. I'm gonna do the letter, just to have this done. You don't care to look away when you fish the letter out of your bag, holding it up. Bet does not look at it. This is from my sister, you explain, though you probably didn't need to. You try to keep your voice steady, commanding. I need to send a reply. How can I get a letter out of the palace? Bet continues to stare at you. Its voice is low and cold when it speaks. You can't. You have no choice but to accept its answer, and you slowly put the letter away. You let Bet go. You kneel cautiously. You can feel Bet's red eyes burning into you as you focus your attention on the spike. It takes several impossibly long minutes to finally wrench the thing wrench the thing free. Three things happen at once. The chain slingshots away from you, yielding to the pressure of Bet's pulling. A gust of wind strikes your face as, it, as great wings flap once, then twice, and then the hall is empty by the time you look up. You realize that you're going to have to sit down tonight to a very awkward dinner. To be continued. That brings you back to the beginning. So that is the full story. There are some alternate bits to it, uh, if you don't pick up certain items, I believe, or if you don't ask the questions in a certain order. I'm not going to play through all of those for now. It seems that there are supposed to be images on this as you're playing, but they're not loading, and I don't know if that's just my computer or if that would happen elsewhere. Let me try this in a different browser. I'm sure the illustrations in this game are lovely, but for some reason my computer, or my browser, something, is not letting me see them. So instead I'm going to share some more images by this creator, because again I followed, because again I found their art first on Tumblr, and so I'm sure the style in there is very similar. So if I go to their page, here we are, and here's specifically ones from based on the 
Beauty and the Beast story they're doing. Here is an illustration of Belle from the story, enjoying the roses in the background and the flower motif on her dress. And it looks like she's holding a couple feathers, whether that's uh, like a writing quill feather or from the Beast is something I am wondering now. Very interesting. Okay. Oh, and here was the work in progress of that same image. And here is... Oh, this one has a background. <laughs> the caption reads, Beauty and the Beast update. Local witch and her horrible cat make a friend. So they're sitting... There's some nice windows in the background and a painting, and the beauty, beauty and the Beast in this are chilling by the window with some plants, and a butterfly is coming into Beauty's hand. Which implies that the beast is a horrible cat, and I, for one, love that description, despite the fact that it has wings and a very long braid to its hair. I, it's just a very funny looking cat. <laughs> so, yeah. And here is, oh, this is from Inktober of this last year, Enchanted, and it's a picture of a rose. I am, um, so I follow some artists on Tumblr. But the way that I, the only reason I knew that Day 7, the prompt for Inktober Day 7 this year was Enchanted, was um, I just casually went through the Beauty and the Beast tag, like I do kind of regularly, and I saw a lot more stuff than normal. Only I would find out that the prompt for Inktober was Enchanted, not by all the artists I follow hosting their Inktobers for the day, but by going through the Beauty and the Beast tag of my own volition and seeing other people using the thing. That's, that's just such a me thing. Anyway. Rose, her horrible cat. <laughs> Here is a different illustration of Belle from the story wearing a suit. And of course there is still a rose brooch type thing. I don't know if that's a, not corsage. What's the, what's the not corsage one? A boutonniere, I think. So yeah, lovely Belle in a suit. It suits her. I did not mean to make that pun when I first said it, but now it's there. Now we all know that it's a pun, and yeah, we're dealing with it. Another little doodle of Belle from this artist in a more in a looser gown. Still have the rose motifs on the rim. I like that style. Interesting. She always seems to have things around her neck, whether it's ribbons or like before it was the kerchief with the suit. I wonder if that's just one of her like fashion things. Oh, some little sketches like probably like concept art style stuff or it says quick sketches from the wor quick sketches of the worst cat you've ever seen <laughs> i still love the insistence on calling this thing a cat because the beast kind of does act like a cat in this i guess lovely sketches that's supposed to be the size comparison or not i don't know oh pretending to flowers reading with its tail has the book propped up with his tail. Oh my gosh. On the chain. Oh, and that's what it looks like with its wings extended. And a little thing in the corner of Beauty and Be of Belle and that uh, Belle has the mask over her face and says, how do I look? And Bet has a fan over its face, you know, covering itself and says, your guess is as good as mine. So fun little things, just being dorks. That's what I love about Beauty and the Beast is when they're dorks. Anyway. Oh, here's the full image of the beast. With tall horns sitting at a table with candles there. Ringing, holding its little... From its horns down to its face and wings. Long hair. Earrings. The beast is wearing earrings. Nice. Candles and it has its little claws up on the table. No, not little. Those claws are very big. But still, cool art. And yeah, so there's more art on this person's page of, you know, the Beauty and the Beast stuff, and also non-Beauty and the Beast stuff. But this video is about Beauty and the Beast, so that's what I'm focusing on right now. And you decided to put up with that. Um, yeah, I hope you liked this read-through of this Beauty and the Beast game. Hopefully the creator will finish the game soon and publish it. And maybe soon enough I'll be able to go through and see the illustrations as I play the game. But until then, thank you for going through this little playthrough with me. Hope you liked it. You should go 
uh, support the artists, follow them, links will be down below to follow them on Tumblr to play this game yourself, and all that fun stuff. Here's to creating some more lovely things and some horrible cats. Um, bye! <laughs>